This is the Comedy Slab, the show that puts a comedy on the slab. You can't really argue with the philosophy behind it, or indeed the title. I'm Adrian Lacey, speaking to you from the southeast of England, uh, which is in lockdown. Well, the whole nation, the United Kingdom, is in lockdown. And um, locked in, likewise, in the Midlands, is uh, Mr Shane O'Connor. Just got a bit of um, what the late, great Ray Moore... Radio 2 disc jockey, you remember him? Oh, yeah. He used to call matters arising. Um, this is apropos, uh, nothing in particular, that was another of his phrases, um, but uh, this is a pickup from last week. If you haven't heard it, you might want to listen to um, when we were, what were we slabbing? God, it's been such a long week. Sally Forever. Uh, that's the one, um, which is a misnomer because it stopped now, so it can't have been forever. But anyway... As a subtext to that, there was a story about me and my cleaner. Now, of course, the world's moved on. I say, of course, depends when you're listening to this, but lockdown has only come into effect in the last week. So whilst my cleaner came the previous week, she phoned me in this week to say, and I was going to get in touch with her anyway, obviously she can't come anymore. You're not allowed visitors. Mm. Um, It it really is like prison. Um, So that's due to the... um, tougher uh, restrictions to prevent uh, the possible transmission of the coronavirus. Now, of course, I agree. That's fine. I wasn't going to argue with that. It's the law. Well, very nearly the law. Um, I said, uh, I said, (laughs) her name's Jane. I said, well, I'll see you in about October when I'm mired in my own filth, Um, which coincidentally is what I say to the women who swipe right on my dating app. Um, (laughs) Because you can't, I suppose there's, there's, is it a thing now, Skype dating? It must be. Is it? Well, I mean, oh, you're a married man. What, what do you well, care? Well, yeah, I'm not allowed to do any of those things. <laughs> pain of pain of death or lots of other pains as well, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's been a weird week, hasn't it? As you, you're saying about oh, it, lockdown, yeah. and it's been like prison. It depends who you're sharing a cell with. I mean, it's all right <laughs> for you. You're in solitary. So, solitary so confinement and have been anyway for years. It reminds me of that episode of Porridge where he just wants a bit of peace and quiet, Fletcher does. And mm. uh, do you remember, and he throws the vicar over the uh, over the balcony. No, um, I don't remember that one. <laughs> he's, he's, he's there praying on his on his knees and he's saying, I'm oh, so help me, God, he said, the next person that comes in and, and disturbs me <laughs> while I'm trying to have a bit of peace and quiet. He said, so help me, I won't be responsible for my actions. <laughs> and the next thing, be at the cell door, the, the prison chaplain comes in and goes, oh, Fletcher. <laughs> anyway. He's he's in front of the governor, and uh, he's he, he, he says, "I can't believe it. he said throwing the prison chaplain over the balcony. He's off the top landing." He said, mm. "He said, and he said it was all right, sir. He said there was there was netting on there. He said that's that's not the point. He said he said the the, the, the chaplain didn't realise the the netting was there, and he went, oh, it's all right.' He said he'll bounce back. In fact, he did quite away. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole thing was he he was trying to have some peace and quiet." Mm. And uh, he just wanted to be left alone. I think it was a Saturday afternoon. Wanted to be left alone. You're all right. You've got that. I've got a wife and two kids, uh, both of whom who are ill. Um, in fact, and I've uh, not been well. In fact, all three not, of us. Not, we must be not get- corona. We hope. No. We well, we must be the only people in the whole country who are not well and haven't got the coronavirus and not, you know <laughs> and not being well because some yeah. people expect. I even phoned the doctors about something and they went, "Would well, you want to come? Should we should we test you? Do you want?" To test? And I went, "Why?" I haven't got the symptoms. Well, yeah, yeah. And they, I think the healthcare professionals are frightened to death of not, not picking it up in somebody or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a funny old week, hasn't it, really? You've just been lonely, haven't you? <laughs> well, that's, you know, situation normal, isn't it? Um, oh. Not that I need anyone's pity. Oh, go on then. No, it's, it's, uh, I thought you were doing another comedy reference. When you said peace and quiet, what sketch show does that remind us of? Ah, peace and quiet. <laughs> and someone comes along with a digger. Digger, 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 digger. What was that, a fast show? No, it's the modern modern toss with oh, uh, animation. See, I never really... <clears throat> yeah, I didn't, I didn't get into that like you did. Mm, um, we although, might have to slab it. Although we, we were talking about out, having an outdoor wee um, <laughs> with um, a, a group of interviews. <laughs> Hello and welcome to... <laughs> which, which was uh, Matthew, Matthew Holness when he was in um, Bruiser. Um, there right. was there was him and Mitchell and Webb and Olivia Coleman and, and some others as well in there. Um, 
Right. And the, he had this recurring sketch. Today I'm having an outdoor wee with, and they'd they'd sit there. <laughs> uh, I managed to see some of those the other day. That's the good thing, isn't it, about having all this time on your hands, is that you do get to to retrace your comedic steps. Yes. Well, there's there's no excuse not to. Although, actually, uh, I've been working for the BBC from home all week, and um, so I, I was going to agree with you uh, up until the point where I realised. Uh, because you'll say it if I don't, that I was late for this recording because I hadn't done enough research in time. So, um, typical BBC. <laughs> oh, isn't it just typical it you, ne- more like? It had never happened on UK TV gold <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> Which, strangely enough, leads us to the show uh, we're putting on The Slab, which is Meet the Richardsons, which we will find on Dave, which, hence the allusion to UK TV, is part of the UK TV family of uh, TV channels. Um, All TV viewing must have skyrocketed with uh, lockdown and streaming and anything else of an electronic nature. Anyway, shall we get into the first of three audio clips? So the uh, the notion is that we put uh, a different comedy each week. We take it in turns to set homework for each other. At the end of last week's show, uh, during which I corpsed over some I- item of um, personal protective uh, equipment, which you wouldn't think would normally be funny, but it might be worth a, a little um, retread, uh, rewind into... Um, Anyway, so the homework set then by me for him and for you, indeed, uh, was Meet the Richardsons. Uh, The Richardsons being John Richardson, stand-up comic, as is his wife, who is, well, professionally, uh, she's retained her name, Lucy Beaumont. And what I found interesting, I read this in the trade press, so this is how it came to my attention, so don't knock the trade press. Uh, I'm speaking as much to myself as anyone else. Um, But anyway, I read about... uh, this and how it sort of came to be and how it's a blending a melding if you will of sort of reality tv with comedy it's part scripted part ad-libbed i think that on its own makes it at least worth putting on the slab giving it a prod um working the scalpel into it see uh, read the entrails whatever image you want um and then at the end of this Uh, edition of uh, the comedy slab we will each give the comedy uh, this particular comedy meet the richardson's a a score out of five tot it up to 10 and get a mark out of 10 between the two of us shouldn't you say what you think i thought of it before you do the clip yeah you're quite right but i couldn't say shouldn't you say she sells seashores on the seashore seashore, yeah (laughs) yeah um I have to say what I think you're going to make of it. Right. And by the way, well, let, let's just say, as we're setting out our own stall, this is a personal opinion. Don't get angry with us, which, of course, is an invitation to get angry with us. I get angry with him, for goodness sake, when he's wrong, which is when he disagrees with me. But really, it's just what we feel about one episode of one show on one day, this day, uh, or whenever we're recording the podcast, and... It really, you know, life is too short to get too upset about it. Unless, I don't know why you're wasting your breath, but I admire you for doing it. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're an insecure actor, in which case, oh, let's leave that hanging there. Then please get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> Said the bishop. Right, now, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to try and guess what you make. Uh, the trouble is, I, I am so inclined to project onto you what I think about any show. Yeah. Um, so I have to fight that, or at least think, well, you might feel the same but you might not um we frequently fall out i uh, disagree uh on shows at least um golly gosh how much do you well we've not you don't like mockumentary uh, which i suppose what's the difference between a reality show and mockumentary well i know i didn't not say necessarily that, like mockumentary, that did i i was, i i you have I in the said, past you've said it's served it's it's it's, it's, it's got a bit run its course there. yeah well, yeah. it's twenty uh, years since The Office Plus. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It's not that I don't. It's not that I don't like it. And and it's it, everybody seems to go down the same, you know, the bit rude kind of way of talking <laughs> to each other, which which was so The Office, wasn't it? And that that's why rude. Yeah, but rude, isn't, isn't that yeah. real life? Or well, maybe mm. I'm rude. Everyone's telling me I'm rude. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I. I, I it's just. Yeah, anyway, yeah, but no, it's not. It's not mockumentary. I mean, if it's done well, I don't mind mockumentary. But I just kind of think it has to be done exceptionally well now because it's such a tired format. 
Well, they're saying reality TV. I suppose, look, you wouldn't call Big Brother a mockumentary, would you? That's very definitely no. what's laughingly known as reality TV, which, of course, we yeah. know bears very little resemblance to reality. But, hey, TV reality is quite different to reality reality. Yeah. So I'm just buying time because I really can't decide. I think you'll find it pleasantly diverting, but I certainly don't think you're going to be massively wowed by it with all due respect but i'm hoping neither will you be massively unwowed by it if that's a turn okay. two and a half out of five i think you're going to give it go straight okay. down the line that's a and wild in the middle guess. yeah yeah as bing crosby once said okay all right sorry anyway you were just about to set up the first clip. well well i'll let them set themselves up really uh, all, all we need to know is actually it is shot in their genuine home in um west yorkshire uh, with their genuine daughter and that's pretty much it, other than it will set itself up, I would hope, after that. Enjoy. Please welcome John Richardson. John Richardson is Britain's third favourite funny man, known for his hilarious panel show appearances. Fat greedy. <laughs> sell out nationwide tours. Mashed potato. And doing his funny anagrams on Countdown. As the letters were coming out, I thought, this is spelling corrosive, this is... And it got right to the end, and then that P came out, and I was so angry that I'm just going with Karopiv. <laughs> Four years ago, John married me. I'm comedian Lucy Beaumont. Some people have described me as quite odd, but I always say I'm not odd, I'm from Hull. But just to attune your ears to the accent, if you can repeat after me, Mamma Mia! Mamma Mia! And that's telling your mother you've arrived. <laughs> Three years ago, we had our daughter, Elsie, and we decided to move to the countryside, to the calm of rural Hebden Bridge. Jesus. Against my better judgment, this programme follows our lives. I don't actually want this lawyer, but marriage is about compromise, isn't it? In this episode, we take our neighbours, Emma and Damien, on the road trip of a lifetime. I could do like a belly cornerly. Have we got this all the way to London? I get an audition for my dream job, doing silly voices in a Pixar film and getting paid for it. You've taken the princess to Draxengard. And that should look after the stone. I kind of felt like I knew the line, the whole line. I obviously don't. I've just proven that I thought I did, but I don't. <laughs> no, me neither. Although, yes, you feel you do. Um, but actually, we were only two seconds in before I thought, hang on. This sounds, Lucy Beaumont sounds a little like Sarah Millican, of whom you are not, shall we say, the world's number one fan. No, I just, no, her voice kind of really, in fact, in fact John Richardson did a, he did his old Sarah Millican impression, but uh, when they're in the car, <laughs> I think, didn't he, or something, and I thought, Did he? Yeah. Intentionally, I, I, yeah, right. And I thought, oh yeah, I, I think I know what he's saying there. Um, yeah, um, do you want a headline? I'm feeling it by your lack of energy. Well, I, I mean, I can't guess the words. Let me try and guess. Give me two seconds. Okay. Um, meet, meet the Richardsons. Leave the Richardsons. Oh, no, that would have been better than mine, really. I came up with, <laughs> meh, the Richardsons. <laughs> M-E-H. Yeah. As the kids say today. Yeah. Uh, indifferent. Yeah, not even indifferent, because that suggests some kind of... Um, or maybe it doesn't suggest some kind of, I was going to say it suggests some kind of malice, but maybe it doesn't, the indifference. But that kind of suggests some sort of emotion, which I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't feel it at all. I didn't, mm. I didn't really, and I don't know why, because um, there was some like kind of funny bits in there, but it, I just, I just, I didn't, yeah, it didn't, it didn't, you know, sometimes it doesn't connect with you at all. And you just think, mm. well done. I sat there at the start as well. I don't know if you remember, if you're a fan like I was, of Heart to Heart with um, Robert, Tony Hart. Rob, no, no, Robert Wagner and um, <laughs> Ron Hart. I can never remember. No, not Ron Hart. I can never remember her name. She had very bouffant hair. Uh, yes, I can see the bouffant hair. I think and they had, a, they had a, a butler, didn't they? And when they met, it was Moida. Um, and when it, when she was doing the intro at the start, I thought, well, I really like. I really like the way they've done this. They really like the intro, but I kind of. After the intro, I, I kind of just couldn't connect with it at all. Mm. But um, what about you? Would, would, did you? Uh, much the same, um, I'm afraid. We always uh, try and come from a perspective of, well, we, I think we do come from a perspective of, uh, before we hit play, if we don't know a show already, uh, wanting to like it. We want it to succeed because it's not much fun sitting through something you're not really 
to use your phrase, uh, connecting with. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, do you know what? I still can't quite work out what doesn't work. I do actually, like, when, I'm, when I'm in the mood, um, feet up with a beer or whatever, um, I do like John Richardson. I know the act is a little twee, would that be a fair term? Cliché. It's a little cute. Uh, well, it's become cliché, but I'm not sure that that's fair on him because I think there might be quite a few copyists who came on behind him. I don't know. Or the, the culture's shifted, hasn't it, over mm, the years? Yeah. Um, when I say cliché, I mean, he's like he's the kind of guy that's, you know, it's, it is, it's the Tony Hancock, it's Victor Meldrew, it's, you know, this, this curmudgeonly guy swimming against the tide and, you know, being dragged to things that he didn't want to do. And, and, you know, he's, he's, I've caught a bit of his program, Ultimate Warrior, um, mm. which is, which is a bit on that. It's all built about that kind of, um, you know, the whole thing. I mean, Jack D, you know, not, not so long ago in, in stand up terms, I kind of think, um, that, that's why I meant cliched really was, was, was that sort of aspect of it. But, right. but he's got a massive following. I mean, you, it's quite clear that he's hugely popular, isn't he? Uh, yes. And, and, and he's been going for some years now, hasn't he? Yeah. And, um, so you don't get to stay at the top for, for years if you haven't found an audience, it just isn't a viable um, business proposition, never mind anything cultural or arty. It's almost like I can't believe he's um, that grumpy, really, because it's a, it's a sort of, it's a nice guy image, isn't it, really? Mm. It's just little details. It's a bit, if I have to, I'm, I'm trying to think on the hoof of uh, who he might remind me of or the type, the genre, I'd bracket him together with a sort of Eddie Izzard style. What, in, what you feel in, about that. in terms of the, what the surrealist side? Well, of. It's, it's, well, more more sort of cute stuff, you know, little niggly stuff. Or, um, I mean, it's not. And this is this is this probably will sound like an insult. But it's not meant to. It's it's not ambitious in the sense of. And this is uh, I do return to this gripe a bit, and maybe it's unreasonable, but or unreasonable to expect everyone to fulfill it but i always want there to be some subtext or something a bit bit bigger underneath the bonnet as it were yeah you know that you want to feel there's a v12 there even if you're poodling around town at 20 miles an hour mm. um and that every now and again you hear the roar and you think all oh, right yes this is this is hinting at bigger stuff universal issues and so on um it's almost like if they were going to be a sort of rowing couple, they weren't rowing enough. And if they were going to be nice, lovey dovey, they weren't quite lovey dovey enough. Yeah, and they Is weren't. Fair? And and yeah, and the, believability was an issue with me. I think they weren't quite real enough as well. And you know, the really curious thing, I I and I feel a bit bit sad and stupid for doing this now. But I I looked up the people who were playing their neighbours. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. To see what to see what else they'd done, but I I suspect they are actually their neighbours, aren't they? I think. Oh no, I can confirm. Yeah, the, the broadcast article I saw that started this off, where I first read about it before seeing it. Um, uh, yes, it says they're their real neighbours. Now I wonder, it is just possible in the world of showbiz that there might be backgrounding information such as, but their neighbours happen to be actors, because they certainly. There's two reasons for being convincing. One is that you're acting and one is that you're not. And um, yeah. I I felt when I first saw it, because I'd forgotten the article and I'd forgotten that it said they were the real neighbours, I'd kind of parked that thought for a mo. Um, I did find them believable, but you're saying there is a credibility issue for you. I, I felt that they weren't and, I, and I, I, I thought they were acting. And now, I mean, that can happen sometimes because, um, you know, you're you're – you're putting words into the mouth of a non-actor and expecting them to be able to act like they're not acting. Hang on. Right, yeah. i have to sketch that out, I think. But I th Hang on. Yeah, run that past me again. But you know what? No, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And and so and so because of that, I, I thought, well, okay, maybe maybe it's that then. I don't know. And, but I wasn't I wasn't really quite sure what it was. It's like, you know, you, it's quite interesting you were saying about like a, um, a reality, TV, reality TV versus uh, mockumentary. Um, hmm. I, I didn't really know where they wanted it to fall in terms of viewer understanding because I found myself a lot of the time 
questioning whether what I was seeing was set up or reality. But does and that matter that much when, at the end of the day, you're being delivered by Dave on a plate, a 25-minute or so comedy? Does, does it really matter? And do normal people care? Well, I think, well, I mean, it does if, if your mind, and this is, this is not just when I was sitting doing the notes, but on the, on the second viewing as well, if your mind is, on the first viewing, sorry, I do the mm. notes on the second viewing. So on the first viewing... I'm just watching it as I would sit there. Now, admittedly, there is an element that you think, well, we are going to be, you know, critiquing it and, and you're you noticing little things, whatever. But I do, my, 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 the, my, the thought process, Adrian, was kind of this. I'm sitting there thinking, right, is this, is this a setup scene now? Is this something that they've, that they've done? Are these real people? Mm. Are they really their neighbours? And then I started thinking, why am I thinking all of these things about the pro and then uh, uh, that's not a good sign is no it? and then so i'm thinking oh, i've just missed what they said there what did he say then about that so i had to kind of rewind that back a bit which was a complete yeah. pain in the bum thanks to the the website that i watched it on oh with the advert break oh, did they well, come in again or? i started i mean you know you would have thought i was in a right foul mood by the time i i, I started <laughs> i wasn't fortunately but I, it said i'd forgot my password which i hadn't right so i had to put a new password sort of that change my password and then it made me watch the adverts twice. And then when the thing came up to, to show it, it got I got an error code two. Well, there's only one thing worse than getting an error code one, isn't there? And that's... Yeah, it's code two. That's a blooming code but two. That reminds me, uh, in um, your not favourite comedy, uh, W1A. Yeah. Although you like bits of it. Yeah, yeah, I, wasn't, yeah I wouldn't... Uh, yeah. Oh, they, well, they did have an episode uh, in the first series when I watched all of them, when I, in the days when I could be a completist, um, as opposed to being a Unitarian now, uh, as one of us has called me because I only watched one of the episodes very often. Um, there's a Code 9 there. And, uh, it, of course, uh, uh, for some of the time, it's my workplace uh, it's set at New Broadcasting House, or Broadcasting House, and um, a Code 9, it turns. I, I mean, I know this is a bit in if you don't in the building, but I think you could still enjoy it even if you've never been there because you, you see it. I mean, it's TV, for goodness sake. A Code 9 is when the bollards come up of their own accord, oh, <laughs> stopping a car from driving into the reception. That was when Prince Charles was coming, wasn't it? And they, uh, was it? Yeah. yeah. It's something like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, the guy who did that was so deadpan. We've got a code nine yes. on the piazza yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Um, so, so anyway, I can't take code seriously, but, um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, once you, once you've gone through that whole thought process, I must say I was exhausted by the time I'd finished, you know, just, just thinking about what I was thinking about. And then <laughs> it's a bit like, it's the Monty Python thing, isn't it? You know, where they're all sat around the table mm. and, uh, we're having a meeting, aren't they? But is, is there something Alliance Insurance Company comes to board them? Um, right. But they're having this meeting, and he said, this is about people getting distracted. And he said, mm. yeah. And he went, what do you mean not enough people are wearing hats? <laughs> <laughs> and he, it, it was just that. I used to do this all the while. My brother, you know, we'd be a lull in the conversation, and he'd say, what do you mean not enough people are wearing hats? But, yeah. <laughs> That distraction thing, and you can't. You, yeah. Your mind is is just, which as you say, is not is not a great sign, is it? Really, I think uh, in that sense. No, a bit a bit of overthinking going on. Yeah. Well, let's see what the dear listener makes of clip number two of three now, and what I haven't said is that um, a major plot point is that uh, they've got an invite to Jonathan Ross's Halloween party. Um, which we will hear a little bit of in the third and final clip. But this is where Lucy Beaumont is putting to the neighbours, uh, who are Mr and Mrs uh, Priestley, genuine neighbours, as we've gathered. Uh, she's putting to them the idea of them heading south with her. Come to London? Yeah, come with us. Are you serious? Yeah, we'll go on like a little road trip. Wow. Oh, dear. Should we go? I'd love to go. Definitely. Definitely. Are we invited to the Halloween party? I don't know. No. I'm not sure. That's pushing no. it. Yeah, it that's fine. Well, it's worth asking. If you don't ask, you don't get it. Well, that's yeah. true. No, excuse me. Hello? You've done what? I'd been on at John all week to move the front room sofa. He's not a natural handyman, shall we say. Oh. 
Oh, hell. John? Hello. Oh, you idiot. Are you Hello. all right? Uh, I'm in a bit of pain, yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Is it on your feet? Well, I was trying to get it upstairs. You look like Wizard of Oz, you know, when the house lands on her feet. <laughs> well, I can appreciate how much pain she was in. Oh, lovely. Oh, it's the veg man. It's your veg man. More witnesses. Hi, yeah. right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this isn't a porno. We're doing a documentary. Are you ready? Oh, there we go. Oh, that's a dream, that. I feel for him, but he's, he's not... He's just not very good at DIY. I'm better. I'm, I should just do it, really. I let him... Do it, cos he, he feels, like, manly and stuff. And But it's best if I just do it. The thing, the thing that worried me about that, I thought, hang on, wasn't he taking the sofa up the stairs? And then they managed... We should explain the visuals. Um, well, we find him under the sofa. I found that quite amusing, and I wondered... Sorry, finish your point about which direction he was going in. No, I was, was going to say, I thought he was taking it up, he said. he was taking. Didn't he say he was taking it up the stairs? <clears throat> and then when the delivery guy helped him down, they took they brought it back down, and I thought, well, that's that's somebody else has got to take that up now. And I spent the rest of the episode <laughs> worrying about who was going to do that. You were overthinking again, weren't because you? they were all going I to would... London. Who's going to move the sofa? Was my <laughs> primary consideration. I, I think the sofa could have gone to London, but you know, I'm, that's just a off the wall suggestion or up the stairs suggestion. I was going to say, did you feel there might be a little callback to a certain Laurel and Hardy episode? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In which case, I thought it was all right. I mean, no, he's on his own in this instance. Um, so it's a twist on that. At least he's not copying it, cloning their idea. Um, I, I found it amusing, but I don't think I laughed out loud at anything in the show, unfortunately. No, no. It was a shame. I wonder whether it works on a level where <clears throat> if you already like him, mm. and, and I have to, at this point, I want to apologise to Lucy Beaumont, but by her own admission, the only reason that she uh, supposedly got an invitation to Jonathan Rossi's party was because she's now with John and not yeah. not in her own right. So, I mean, she she is quite aware of being in his professional shadow anyway, isn't she, I suppose? And I, had, I hadn't seen any of her work before, and when she did that gag about Mamma Mia, that's telling your mum you're home, I mean, that was that was doing the rounds when I was, like, six. Was it? Yeah. Oh, well, I'd missed it. I enjoyed that. Right. Okay. That's like a kind but, of dad joke from the 1970s, I thought, really. But <laughs> Gosh, if you're saying that, must be old. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, so, yeah. so I mean, she, you know, she she recognises that that is, is the case, I suppose, really. But, I mean, I suppose if you're a fan of him, I mean, it was quite interesting, as I often do, when I kind of formulate an opinion and I, I then go and have a look on something like IMDb and have a look at some of the, the user reviews to see whether I'm mm. the weirdo in the room. And in this particular case, I was... Um, because oh, right. I, because oh, I, it was the fan base. Well, I suspect this is fan base, but also rather disconcertingly and alarmingly, all the people that made a comment about Lucy Beaumont was were, were mm. about her looks and how hot she was. Which, to me, you I mean call me a boring old married man or what? I don't know, but doesn't <laughs> doesn't enter into you know what she looks like. He's not really here nor there. Really, it's about the comedy and and. The believability and the and the pathos and the drama and the pace and the you know and all the other things, um, yeah. Not whether she's got nice legs or not. And I just thought, <laughs> what kind of reviews? You know, people leave. I mean, I some said people. You know, they leave their own review and do what they want. But I just did kind of think that's worse in a way than than saying actually I don't really know her work or I don't like her or whatever. It's to say, oh, and she isn't she cute. <laughs> was a bit condescending, I thought, but there you go. What do I know? Well, you're a feminist, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think spring has sprung I think, by the sound of your oh, angle poised mic. That was my twizzler from my martini. I do apologise. Oof. Well, very nice too. Yeah. Any time, any place, anywhere. But but do you know what I mean? So I mean, she she kind of does. She does recognise the shadow that he casts. But I guess. I guess if you were, my original point was, I guess if you're a big fan of John Richardson, mm. you might d delve into this with gusto. Or whoever you happen to be with Augustus. in your lockdown. Yes. <laughs> I was going to, th that northern stereotype, oh, I, oh, I'd love to go to London, me, that'd be, oh, that'd be <laughs> great. I found really quite um, 
insulting in a way. I don't, I don't know. You wouldn't get away with a stereotype like that against any other um, regional um, type, as it were, would you? Well, I don't know. There's the um, there's this terrible stereotype of the country bumpkin. Um, just a variation on a theme, isn't it? Well, that you're not sophisticated. The more miles you're out of London. Well, Ronnie Barker always used to say that, didn't he? He said they they chose the country bumpkin uh, mm. d- deliberately because they never got complaint letters from people saying, "How dare you? I'm a country bumpkin." <laughs> but you might say, "How dare you?" I happen to have a burr and a slightly regional accent and I live in either the West Country or in uh, East Anglia. Well, anyway, mm. if he didn't get letters, he didn't get letters. I'll tell you why he didn't get letters, because he wasn't the one receiving the mailbag. It's like a certain broadcaster, who I won't name, uh, all the any complaints directed at them uh, are deleted by the producer. That's probably true of anyone who's got a posh producer. Um, who who does these things. So they, they never get to see the complaints. Once you get a certain level of fame and um, infamy, infamy. Right. Um, right, so where are we going to go? Should we go to um, clip number three? Don't, can, I, can I just ask you about that, the stereotype? Didn't that bother you? Because you normally, you're the, normally the one that's hot on this kind of stuff. Well, I think I, I'm afraid to say, and it probably shouldn't be the case, uh, but... I think it was a bit of a lost cause for me by then. Okay. Um, which is, again, I say this more in sorrow than in anger, as so, uh, as so often is the case, mm. although more often than not, we do actually enjoy the shows. Um, this is not any slight on uh, the couple at the centre of it or their neighbours. I haven't met any of these people. Um, people who get fed up with my name dropping will be delighted to hear that. I can't name drop about anyone in this show. Other than... oh. Jonathan Ross and Jason Donovan, funnily enough. Oh, really? But, yeah. Do you want any anic? No. Mm. No, no, it'll be indulgent. Don't tempt me. Well, maybe after we hear this clip. Okay. But it's not much. It's, it's not that good. I'm not going to build it up, to be honest. Is it worth keeping this out? <laughs> or not? Should I, should I put that away? <laughs> Is it not? I'm, gonna, I'm editing this week's show. That, that will not appear. Oh. Uh, all people will be very confused as to why I'm saying that will not appear when nothing has appeared because no. I've already edited it out. Not even if I go... <laughs> like that. All that. <laughs> I think you've done yourself a mischief. <laughs> you've broken it. Anyway, what I need to fill in is that your friend... Um, we've, we've gathered that you can't remember what the words are that he has to do for this Pixar thing. By the way, do we think that the Pixar thing's real? I didn't get round to looking up whether he was in a Pixar animation i suspect it might be i i think like you i think it was a kind of lost cause by that stage then i was um <laughs> you didn't care i was yeah i was just going along for the ride really i think at that stage and uh i, I have, to, I to, have to say i wrote the fewest notes for for in 88 episodes of the comedy slab mm. uh, for this simply because i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't think of anything constructive really that i could that I could add to it because it was all encapsulated in that you know that whole thing of well, it it just th- there's a disconnection for for whatever reason. Mm. Well, we we must wrap up our thoughts the other side of the clip as to what we think the connection might be or the lack of okay the reason for it. Um. So I need to fill in some gaps. So he's doing his uh, animation voices uh, variations on a theme, and uh, that's down in London. Then that overruns. So that means that Mrs. Richardson, who isn't called Mrs. Richardson, but is Lucy Beaumont, she's got a spare ticket. She can her plus one to go to the party, uh, Jonathan Ross's Halloween party, um, and not surprisingly, she takes one of the neighbours, the female um, neighbour, who is Emma Priestley. Um, but how is she going to convince Jonathan Ross that actually John Richardson is by her side? Well, um, by some canny twist, uh, Emma Priestley wears... Uh, this was the... Um, uh, what, what's it called? <laughs> I've really dried on... Um, he puts on a. He John was. He tries on earlier in the show. He tries on this head of. Do you know this Dobby character? Yeah, Do- Do- yeah, Dobby. I mean, from where? Um, fr- Dobby's from um, Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. 
Um, oh, I'm not, I, and I've never and... seen it, but yeah. I only knew. Be- and the only reason I knew that is because of Peep Show. Um, because oh, well, that's where she gets the name from. Like, I was going to say there is a Dobby in comedy, and it's not. Yeah, that. yeah, that's that's. I think that's why they they named somebody named her that because they thought <clears throat> she looked like Dobby, which is not a compliment. Is that is that Collie's name, or um, the other one in Peep Show? Um, it's. Um, Oh, the girl from Leicester. When I say Collie, that's Olivia Coleman. It's not her, no, her character. No, it's um uh oh, so her name escapes me. Girl from Leicester, a comedian from Leicester who um right who uh, plays Dobby. It, it'll it'll come to me in right. a second because I'm going to look it up. <laughs> yeah, but we won't draw attention to that because that'll be during the clip. So, uh, so there's a Dobby head on Emma. And the only thing, so she's got to in sound, she's got to impersonate John Richardson. Sorry, this is the. It, it makes you realise the plot's a little bit thicker than perhaps we've given it credit for, that it takes me forever, or, or that I'm not very good at explaining. But anyway, um, so uh, Emma's got this head on, and uh, she's instructed to lean forward so her lady bumps don't show. And um, then Jonathan Ross, uh, you know, sort of wants to exchange pleasantries, as you would with someone you've invited, and that's where the fact that she can only say in the style of John Richardson... Hello. Um, that's that's where she comes a little unstuck at Jonathan Ross's uh, Halloween party. Uh, Les, you, are you all right? <laughs> do you think Jonathan Ross does all this himself? He can't do it, can he? Hey, Lucy, John, how are you? Hello. It's great to see you. I'm so glad you finally made it. Thank you so much. I, I have been waiting my whole life for this. Well, you've been invited for what? Five, I think five times I've invited you and he's, he, John's never come. No, I know. Why, why, what made you change your mind? Why did you come this year, John? Hello. <laughs> Just had a change of heart, didn't you? Just thought, f*** it, why not? <laughs> oh, good. You know what? I've got a new sitcom commissioned. Really? Yeah, with the writer of that did Car Share. Peter K. Car Share! Peter K. No, this is called Tim Reed. Oh, there was a, an, another writer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you okay, John? Is he okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, you fa- Hello. Oh, my God, is that Jason Donovan over there? Yeah, yeah, it's Jason's here, yeah. Right, we'll just go and have a Okay, <laughs> see okay I'll see you later. See John, you I'll see you later, John. <laughs> Jason! You don't have to leave, but. but I'm so yeah. sorry. Right. You see that, so that is the uh, crossing the reality line there, isn't it? I suppose because Tim Reed, who she mentions, mm. wrote this with her, and Tim Reed ah. also wrote Car Share for Peter K. Um, Co-wrote with Peter K. Yeah, so, so that so that is um, that's kind of reality bleeding through there. Reality, reality. Yeah. Is that is that not what we kind of expected? Yeah, I, I suppose. So. I mean, I I kind of. By the time I got halfway through, I I I was of the impression that a lot of it would be um, prefabricated and 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 wouldn't wouldn't be based in much of reality other than the you know the characters themselves. But um, mm. um, I don't know. Um, I, I didn't. Oh, you, you'll you'll love this. Sorry, I've just seen on imdb.com of course the internet movie database um if you enjoy meet the richardsons guess what it points to, oh, I saw to that. more like this i saw that yeah more like this if you like this <laughs> you'll like king, king gary gary yeah which I thought was nice um and, and can i just apologize to izzy sutty as well i've changed her place of birth from leicester to she's actually a whole lass as well oh but she live uh, lives or li- she was raised in matlock or matlock I mean, bath or bath Oh, right. Yeah, oh, okay. where we used to uh, hang out Stomp. at BBC Radio Derbyshire. Stomp, a stomping ground. So, um, now, a couple of things here. Do you think it's trading too much on celebrity? I, I felt... You know, the Jonathan Ross part made me feel a little mm. bit... As an outsider, I felt a little bit excluded because... You knew from clips that you'd seen that they'd been on that John and Lucy had been on the Jonathan Ross show, right? Yeah, and it all felt a bit in. Is that what is that? Did you feel that as well? Um, I didn't feel on the outside in quite the same way you're saying, but I was just wondering whether it was a oh, we don't have to try too hard because we've got a big celeb name or names. Um, and it looked, I mean, you know, in the weird and not always wonderful world of showbiz, 
there really is a kind of pecking order. And I would say, but you might think differently and listeners might think differently, but Jonathan Ross is a bigger name, been in the business longer. He's an older guy. Yeah. Um, so it's a kind of, right, pecking order. You've sort of referred to Lucy putting herself below John Richardson. Then you've got Jonathan Ross above John Richardson and Jason Donovan, mm, arguable, depending, again, whether you're a fan or not. Is he above Jonathan Ross or somewhere between? You know, it just... It's all a bit, hang on, is this a substitute for a plot? Yeah. It did. <laughs> or passion, even. The whole Jason Donovan thing where she kind of really annoyed him and, and pestered him and wanted his photo and kind of another photo. And, he, and he, I kind of thought, oh, so this is going to go somewhere. And it kind of, it kind of led up a cul-de-sac, didn't it, really? It didn't kind of go mm. uh, go anywhere at all. Um, it's all a bit passion light. Um, unless, of course, as you say, you know, if you're in the fan club, then I don't think you're going to notice that. Too much. No, you don't know. It depends how critical you are as a fan. Probably quite like it, wouldn't you? I would have thought if you're, if you're, as I say, if you're a big fan. Um, mm. I'm, I'm surprised. It's interesting. She's had an interesting. Lucy Beaumont's had an interesting um, career so far. I mean, she's, she's, she trained as a, as a thespian, I think, didn't she? I think she was acting was something she was passionate about. She was in, uh, or she toured with the whole Truck Theatre Company, which have got a massive reputation oh. haven't they they're they're really yeah well, well i guess if you're an actor in hull there's a good chance that you're at least going to try and move in that orbit yeah uh obviously you, i'm not dismissing the fact you'd need um good acting chops but i'd imagine you know if i went there and spoke terribly terribly um they might not think oh you're one of us come on in They'd say to you, where are you from? And you go, well, uh, <laughs> near London. They go, oh, I'd love to go to London. I would. <laughs> be Can we come? So, um, But the other thing, the other thing I noticed thought? as well yeah. was that she was mentored by Jeremy Dyson from uh, the League of Gentlemen, which you kind of think, so she's moved in, you know, some, some pretty exalted circles. Um, but... Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get that connection. Couldn't make it work for me. I'm sad to say. Mm, I'm sad too. But here's an interesting thing. About, just rolling back a bit before we played that um, third and final clip. Before we finally now get round to uh, scoring, or in just a sec, um, the genre thing. I um, I'm trying not to speak with forked tongue because I've had um, comedy I kept banging on about that I put up on my own solo project londonpodcast.net it's called going forward i had it critiqued by i won't name him because i don't want to ruin his career but a very kindly um bbc radio comedy producer of some years standing or sitting and certainly knows his stuff and worked on big name radio shows hmm. um and he was kind enough he said he said and it sounded like a compliment first of all he said uh i listened to it twice i thought well, that's good but actually what he was saying in the email was, because the second time I was trying to work out what it was. And his problem with it was, guess what? I'd blended genres. And he felt I did a, what, what did he call it? Not a body swerve, um, not even a gear change. What was it? A handbrake turn? No, so anyway, you get the image. Um, uh, a sudden uh, swerve, uh, I suppose, in what, if you think of things in three acts, and I sort of tried to construct it, I mean, it sounds terribly pretentious, but I think sitcoms, uh, well, sometimes they can be two acts, but you're trying to have two big plot points. Well, that's what I was going for. And so what you might call act three, uh, the last third, uh, just he didn't like that uh, pivot, I think was the word. That was it. Right. He didn't like the pivot. And he said, well, it's all very well. It started out being genre x and then it became genre y and he and he was he's was very reasonable the way he put it he said i might like genre x and you might keep me for genre y but i might be confused or disoriented uh as obviously to some extent he was uh, hence playing it a second time right. so i know whereof i speak and i i you know we get critiqued don't we with the podcast and so it's not it's not coming from a place of oh you, you never create anything so you don't know what it's like to be cr critiqued um he said in a terrible, patronising Northern accent. I thought it was quite good. That's one of your better ones. Oh, was it? Yeah, I quite like that one. <laughs> Are you being patronising, though? Yeah. Or sarcastic? It's, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? That, that whole, you never create anything. And, and yet, mm. if you, <clears throat> you know, you're trying to speak from the heart and speak truthfully without, without causing, 
upset. I think that is quite creative as a process, really, and I, I disagree that because I always used to think that. Mm. I, I remember coming home from doing a radio show one day, and uh, a particular episode that I wasn't, you know, particularly proud of, and um, um, talking to the builder, and I said, "What have you done?" And he said, oh, "We built this. I built this wall today." And I, I remember being really jealous of the guy and thinking, <laughs> "You got something solid." Yeah, look, you, that's going to be there for generations, probably. Um, yeah. well, it would have been. And you got to do another show the next day. If it, yeah, if you'd put any water in it, it'd probably still be standing there. But you know, that's that's by the by. <laughs> he he was a failed radio presenter, I think. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Though you kind of think so. Yeah. You, you kind of get jealous of people who are actually creating things. But I think you can do yourself down in that sense. But um, anyway, sorry. Should we should we do? Do you want to do the numbers? I think we should. Whose turn is it to go first? I think it's you. It's yours, isn't it? I think. Okay, let's do it. Um, I'm going to go, guess what? I projected onto you what I was uh, going to score all along, oh, okay. which is straight down the line, two and a half out of five. Okay. Uh, and I'm guessing for the same reasons that we've discussed, um, it's a two yeah. from me. Um, I saw that coming a mile yeah, off. Yeah, it is, it is a two from me, I'm, I'm afraid. And like I say, you know, I... I I, I don't know. I, I, it might be interesting to see. And again, you know, we watched episode four, did we, I think, of the series? Yeah, sorry, I should have said that at the top. Series one, episode four of Meet the Richardsons on Dave, yeah. You know, maybe maybe it's it's worth grabbing another episode and seeing seeing if we connect any, any more with that. I mean, I don't know why I'm saying that, because I know you won't do it, You'd, you know. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping you were talking to the listener, not me. You have no fidelity at all, do you? So uh, there's no point mentioning well, I've got no, you. I've got no time management skills. That's my problem. That's true. It's organisational skills are, are just as bad as well, really. So um, anyway, yeah. so, should I pick some homework for next week then, old boy? Oh, yes. Let me uh, have my analogue pen and analogue paper to hand. Oh, I'm glad you've got your analogue pen and your analogue paper because you're going to need it because we're going analogue. We are going back in time. And it was something that I saw, and I'm guessing, I don't know if it's because of lockdown and the coronavirus and all the rest of it, Mm. but it was something I caught on the TV the other day, and I was absolutely captivated by watching it. Now, I'm not saying that it was good. I'm not saying it was bad, but I was absolutely captivated i could not stop Ooh. watching it and i think it's because i'd got my comedy slab eyes in right and it's a program i'd seen so many times before but i just kind of watched it in a whole different way and i was as i say no other word than captivated uh, i'll put you out your misery or do you want me to give you a clue should i give you one clue and i yeah, I'll give us a clue, give us a clue. I, won't, I won't even use a word i'll give you a noise and I bet you get it from the noise, right? Th- that's how th- oh. that's how massive this is. Ready for the noise? Uh, okay, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Gervais, that's the show within the show, which is uh, when the whistle blows. When the wind blows. No, when the whistle blows. No. No, it can't be, because we've slapped that already. No, back, oh, well, further back in then. time, if I go... <laughs> oh, well... Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, Betty, um, it ain't half hot, Mum. No, some mothers um, do have them. Frank Spencer? Yeah. Oh, God. I knew what sorry. you meant. I knew what you meant. Yes. It's been a long week getting up at 3.45 in the morning. Yeah, Michael, um, Michael yes, Crawford, Michelle Detrice. In, uh, in Those s- are the names I was struggling for, yes. In Some Mothers Do Have Them. It is so... There are so many things to talk about with this. You, <laughs> you've, 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 and I'm just looking at the, the episodes now. The one I saw... Uh, I think, um, was uh, when um, it would have been Series 2, Episode 6, The Baby Arrives, which is when uh, when Je- <laughs> Jessica is born. Jessica. Um, but because I've got the head start on that one, I won't actually, I won't actually do that one. I'll go a couple of episodes ahead. This is uh, Series 2, Episode 8. Oh, hang on. Bit my analogue pen. And this one's called Learning to Drive. Some mothers do have them. <laughs> I, could, I could see his face now. Exactly. <laughs> Mm, there's no need to be like that. Uh, <laughs> learning to Drive, Series 2, Episode 8. Some mothers do have them, um, and we're going all old school on your ass. So how's about that? Oh, can he say that? Um, anyway, yes, BBC TV, that would have been BBC One in colour. Um, great invention that was. Right. Uh, oh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, or am I? Is it going to not stand the test of time? Well... Captivated. Mm. I was captivated. Captivated. I think we've got that sense now. 
And you're scribbling with your own analog pen by the sound of it. I'm just trying to get it to work. Right. Uh, well, that's the problem I have with you, really, every week. Anyway, um, it falls on me to uh, give you uh, our social meds um, handles. Well, I've already said Twitter is at Comedy Slab. It'd be great if you followed us there. You never know what you might find, little gems of comedy that we tweet now and again. Um, and also, likewise, uh, there's a Facebook page. We'd like you to like it. We'd love you to like it. It's also at Comedy Slab. Uh, you can't knock the system, really, can you? And um, we would love a flourish of um, generous stars on uh, iTunes, stroke uh, Apple Podcasts. That really does help the show uh, just get a bit more prominence because you, you know these uh, algorithm things going on all the time. Well, uh, the, the more you uh, feel generous towards us, the more people get to hear about the show. And uh, we would love to make the... Um, Entourage, the fan base, ever larger across the globe. Mm. Um, no, no, and, no better um, time to do that is than when people are compulsory well, locked in their own houses. There's, there's no excuse, really. No excuse. No, if we don't do it now, uh, when you never say, happen, will we, it? well, indeed, I wondered why that at first. I wondered why, if that was why you were saying uh, you were captivated because you were captive. Uh -huh. um, but hey. So we did there. But anyway, um, and finally, um, personal recommendations. Well, you're not going to see too many people other than people under your own roof in the UK at the moment, uh, if you're listening to us while the uh, uh, house arrest continues for all of us. Um, but you could still do um, uh, recommendations of the Comedy Slab to your friends on whatever you're video conferencing them on, Skype, Zoom, FaceTime, you name it. Or just wrap it around the leg of a pigeon and throw him out the window and... Uh see where he lands that's analog yeah yes um if you like us but you don't like where you're getting us from don't forget you can get us on spreaker stitcher iheart radio uh apple podcasts um spotify which i always think i always seem to be impressed with that one i don't know why whenever i look on spotify <laughs> i love the way you say it each time as if as if it's the first day oh we're on spotify i do every time i look on spot i don't like and i'm looking for something and somebody go can you look something up on spotify I go oh yeah hang on a second i just put in comedy so i go look at that that's us that's amazing i don't know why because it's the Is same that like as being on being on bbc one it's the same as apple <laughs> podcast isn't it i don't i don't understand why i get so much more excited by so I, don't, I don't know anyway. But yeah, loads of places you can find us and uh, we'd love you to find us uh, on uh, pass, pass us around uh, like some cheap flues here to party. <laughs> no comment. And uh, I've got an idea for a TV reality series. Uh, it's called Meet the O'Connors. What do you think? Oh dear. Who'd want to watch that? Um, no, no. <laughs> You're I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. We had a reunion once and I met them. Pfft. No. <laughs> Rotten, stinking bunch they are. <laughs> oh, that's charming about your lovely wife. Uh, we were going to do one called Meet the Laces, but it sounded like it was something to do with lingerie, didn't it? It was just... <laughs> <laughs> but also, it was a kiss of death to my marriage, so, uh, yeah, that'll earn you. <laughs> 